let me get the okay can uh, can you see the powerpoint yes we can yes okay. we can hopefully you can see that and not my as, as skylar said welcome everybody and as skylar said my camera has been kind of um bugging out here a little bit but uh, hopefully you can see the the PowerPoint and uh, and we'll get rolling here. So uh, again, welcome everybody. And I'm Jim Hunsinger, Lean Frontiers, along with Scott Curtis of the TWA Institute and Cheryl Jekyll of the Lean Learning Center. And uh, what we want to talk to you about um, is uh, on some skills, some fundamental skills and what is uh, what we saw as possible to probable. And what we're going to do, we're mostly going to go through um, just some questions that have came up and try to discuss through those. And we also have a, a little bit of content we'll share with you as well as we go through this. And if you have any questions, um, you can put them into the chat. And I think Skylar will, will field those um, or even two, you can even, if, if you want, and Skylar probably have to let us know um, if you wanna uh, you know, uh, mute yourself and um, just pose a question, that'd be fi fine also. So let's get rolling here. So um, kind of one of the things that commonly comes up, maybe, there we go. Um, with all this is uh, just a question that's always there is, are, you, are your improvement efforts getting the desired results? And obviously one of the reasons we have this going on, I wanna talk about this is because typically the answer is no. And, um, you know, Cheryl, you've been working with a number of companies on this. I don't know if you want to kind of kick off this discussion from this question. Yeah, I mean, I certainly would be happy to. And I would say, first off, you're one of the groups that like, no, we are completely getting the results we want. Then you need to be sharing that with the others because they could use that information. Um, what I'm seeing is a lot of times um, groups have, are um, working really hard. They're doing what they would call a lot of good work. Um, a lot of the right things, but when you really look at whether the their the metrics they want to move are consistently moving in the right direction, um, they're usually generally not happy with that. Um, sometimes there's like some quick boosts and then they don't quite sustain some of that concern. Um, and I don't think it's so much it's all about the metrics, it's all about the results. But I think on the other hand, uh, we're all hardwired to want to be successful. So when I see teams exerting a lot of energy and effort to put the initiatives or practices in place, and they don't quite work the way they need to, they just get frustrated and um, discouraged. And so to me, given my background, what, what motivates me is making sure these teams feel successful and that whatever changes need to be made, which I don't think are huge a lot of times. It's like they're close, but it's not close enough to get to get um, the right momentum and traction on on the effort, so that's really what we've been spending our time talking about lately. Is what what could people do differently to get a stronger out, get better results? So as I said, proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Scott, what do you think about this? Yeah, and, and, and really, I'll just I'll pick up on, on one of the comments you made, Cheryl. Is that it's uh, in many cases it's the the sustainment that many companies and organizations struggle with, uh, you know, they'll they'll get a uh, an initiative started, and um, you know they'll they'll get uh, they'll get it started, they'll get resources working on it, they'll see that that initial improvement, and uh, you know then in many cases they'll then they'll shift their focus uh, to another initiative, and then we see that uh, you know the entropy takeover and things start to backslide. You know, very typical with, you know, historically with uh, the Kaizen events. You know, we get a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement, get people uh, focused on it, uh, put the changes in place. We think we've got a, you know, a better, better way of doing the work. And then, uh, you know, over time, whether it's weeks or months, we start to see some, some backsliding or erosion. So, you know, we've seen that for, uh, for a number of years. And, you know, uh, you know many of the clients that have, have the stick to itiveness to to try to work through that. Um, we we've, we've seen some some good results and in, in uh, what we need to do to to help them help organizations move through that. Yeah, yeah. I think go along with that. And kind of what Scott was saying. A lot of the backsliding. I think it. I think it, at a basic level, a lot of organizations people struggle with something getting something going initially. You know, we've certainly seen that as is as a 
learn, uh, I guess, in the context of a particular skill or some of these basic skills, that, uh, fundamental skills that we'll talk about is yeah. trying to get them launched and going. They'll struggle with that. But then as Scott said, a lot of organizations will get it launched and get it going, but they'll tend to backslide or they, they'll move a little bit and then just can't get further over the next hurdle and just just uh, hang up on that and and see organizations that'll, that'll, and I remember Cheryl, you and I were talking about this, I think about a week ago, just are doing some good things, but just get hung up literally almost for years. They said, we've been doing this for a long time, but we just can't get ourselves to move forward from where we've moved up from, you know, maybe five years ago. And that seems to, to be a struggle. And I think it's a combination of just getting those skills further deployed and then also too which is important the infrastructure in place to 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 spread them out and then again the infrastructure in place that allows them to make the next move the next i guess series of learnings to get next to get to that next hurdle right and, and Jim, just one last thought on, on this theme this topic i know i, I use this uh, quite often it's uh, some research from the, the shingle institute and they did some uh, research and they studied why many, you know, lean or continuous improvement projects, um, they said fail, but I, I would say they underperform. What we're talking about, the, those, those variable results over time. So what they came up with, and it's sort of in the theme of what we're gonna be discussing today is they came up with three areas uh, that they, they found lacking. Uh, uh, first one was a lack of uh, work standards and getting the standard work. The second was this uh, not creating this environment, uh, this culture of mutual trust and respect between leadership and, and the workforce. And then lastly was this, you know, early adopters, uh, early practitioners that'll, you know, focus on the tools and the methods of, of lean and continuous improvement, but really lost uh, or didn't focus on the employees enough, uh, the people side of this whole equation. So some things we'll talk about around those. Okay. All right. Good. We'll move on to the next question. If I, there we go. Um, so next, que next question is pretty common as we see is, uh, what challenges do you see in achieving success? So. Um, so I, started, I was just in a meeting, I can tell you, so five minutes ago, <laughs> you know, it's such a good group of people I was talking to today and, and they have been laying out this plan and they have this plan and then when we kind of get up close to it, they're like, is it too aggressive? How do we involve everybody? And yet there's so many skills, there's so many topics. And then they start saying like, it just feels unmanageable. It can get like, I just can't figure out the path to pull all these components together and in a way that's manageable. And like, again, they were talking about a group of 448 people. It doesn't matter what's 20 people, a hundred or a thousand. It's like, I, I, how do you get, people all moving down a path of so many new skills and capabilities in a way that works. And it can just, I think, feel really overwhelming. There's different levels of, of people, you know, whether it be leaders, uh, leadership levels or others, you know, it's just a lot of different groups, departments. It's a lot to think about. It's not an easy thing to organize. No. And, and, and we see that uh, quite often as well, is that that overwhelmed with uh, with everything they have in front of them and in that lack of alignment throughout the organization on the, on the few critical things that, that they should be driving uh, you know the, the, the organization at any particular time and so we get into this uh, you know this state of paralysis by analysis we don't you know we know we've got to do all these things we just don't know where to start and, and who should be doing what so uh, we see that often. Yeah, and I, and I think one thing you could, if you, because one thing we'll be talking about is Toyota Kata, I think would be a good, I'll say model, because it's always easier said than done. But if you look at that, so what, what does it tell you? If you look at the model with the Toyota Kata or the improvement Kata is you, you set this challenge, you know, you want to get to this particular um, ob objective, but that's far off. And you don't, obviously, it's kind of like Cheryl and Scott are just talking about, you don't necessarily really know the path, or sometimes you're a little overwhelmed by the path that you can see, but what what it kind of tells you is to is to run through iterative steps. 
to experiment, to learn as you go, knowing that your course is gonna be redirect as you go through these different learning experiments, as you gain more information, because that's part of it too, is you take a step forward, you learn a little, a little bit more, you can see a little bit further forward and you take these iterative steps. So keeping that ultimate objective or challenge in mind, you do have to go through a series of uh, iterative steps, experiments, learnings in order to kind of, as in, the, in that book says, navigate that unclear territory. Sometimes unclear, sometimes a little bit overwhelming territory. Yeah, yeah. So the, by the way, the goal of this conversation is not to keep pointing out what's wrong. It's that we've actually, what we're here to share is we've been having a lot of ideas lately in discussion about how to, you know, what could, what could be done differently to get from, that's why the title was possible to probable. How can we get from, how can we increase the odds of success without a major overhaul? Like what, what could make, what small levers might make a difference to having much better success without, you know, like a, do it completely differently. So that's what we're here to talk about today. All right. Um, this is the next slide. So I think Cheryl, this is something you kind of added in if you want to make put some little discussion around this. Just, I mean, I don't know whether we need to discuss it. I, I know we've got a couple of things we want to get through today, but this is just what I'm saying. It's like if, if one of the challenges, people just feel like there's these, what we've been discussing is the way people learn this content is like it's this idea and this idea, and it kind of floats out here as if they're separate things. And what we've been talking a lot about is like to probably get through some of this challenge, we have to get more, find easier ways to connect the concepts, more understanding how they fit together and how they go together. Um, so even literally in my last conversation, you can still see the separateness, like it's like they're here and there and, and they're having a hard time organizing it. And that's really one of the things we've been talking a lot about. What could be done to help people learn this more in a more integrated way and understand it. So this is just pointing to that problem with how many different concepts and that it's not easy to, how they hook together. Yeah. yeah. And just quickly from my perspective, I'll talk about in a, in a few moments is that these are all connected or at least they should be. They're all part of an overarching system. Uh, it's organic. It, it's, it's a living, uh, you know, system that, that that's operating on a, on a daily basis within an organization. Yeah, so connecting think, the dots. And I think, and 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 how the and and I said we're going to I think come to that. How the kind of these foundational fundamental skills help you to in a way ultimately ultimately in time achieve um, success in in, a, in these variety of um, of uh, things as as what was laid out. Um, so the the next one is um, this. I've heard this. Gosh, I've heard this question for so many years. Is, uh, is should we be using standard, or do we use standard work or uh, Kaizen um, is something I hear all the time. And uh, I guess my answer and, and uh, is always with it is yes. And my point, the point is, and I'll talk a little bit this, about this more later is yes, actually the way from my experience is you can't do one without the other. They, they have to coexist. Um, you do standard work, but you do Kaizen and you can't do standard work unless you're doing Kaizen and you can't improve on your standard work unless you're doing Kaizen and standard work becomes a baseline for doing your improvements. And, and, and again, we'll talk a little bit here in a moment about some of these uh, fundamental skills and how they correlate with this. But I mean, certainly Scott, I know you've, you run into this probably all the, about every all the time. Week. All the time is my, is my good friend and partner says, uh, Pat Ralph. he says it's, yeah, it's the, Either side of the same coin, you know, you got you got standard work and you got kaizen. You know, they're they're almost one and the same. All right, move to the next one. Yeah. So, how do we go about getting better results? Yeah. So, I just in sharing with uh, what we've been discussing about that is, um, and we've been hard at work. At it. It's been interesting. We as we came together to have those conversations, we started looking at specific examples, and really getting clear, like really where where are where are people actually stuck at? And again, these are groups with quite a bit of time under their belt that are just still after 15, 20 years, not satisfied. They're just not getting the the traction they're looking for. What we're coming up with is is it's one I think um, you know it would be interesting to get your thoughts on it. 
I think one is prioritization keeps coming up with me. It's like, like there's so much, how do you, how do you narrow the focus on the most important things where you get the most traction and get rhythms and get small successes and build on that and keep going, keep going. And I keep thinking one of the things that I don't see in place the way it's going to need to be for it to go from possible to probable is really clear prioritization and um, a path that gets results and then more results, more results. Um, so I think that's why it's important to line it up to the metrics. It's not just for the sake of the metric, it's to get on a path of their cycles of improvement and um, and then that, and to build off of those. So that's one, that's one ingredient I'm seeing that I think it's gonna take to get better results. What do you guys think? Yeah, in, in the one, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, one intense focus that we always try to uh, instill the thought process is, you know, with intense focus on safety, quality, delivery, and cost, with regards to delivering the best value to the to the client, and that's that's a nice and easy thing to say, but in practice, it's hard. And getting getting everybody focused on those those four pillars and all the work that we do, and all the problem solving that we do is, is intensely focused on that on a regular basis. Yeah, no, I, no, I add in that uh, I think I think the baseline for for doing this and this we're going to get into is. Uh, learning learning these different skills these fundamental skills that really really become the that are the base of um of being able to accomplish um uh, these different things the um yeah i guess you want to a lot of times in lean you talk about the different tools the tools uh really evolve out of these fundamental skills on using these skills on how to develop countermeasures for particular problems challenges that uh that we ran into and then developing things from that. And also too, utilizing these, these skills, because basically what you're trying to develop are these, these habits. You know, how do you develop habits? Well, that's applying skills, ultimately you could apply them without thinking about it, where these habitual skills, you know, develop through practice and, uh, and, all, and the underlying um, pattern with these skills are, is really, developing the, the behavior and, and habits of scientific thinking. So scientific thinking, whether you're talking about production issues or management issues or um, you know, organizational issues, using basically a scientific thinking methodology, which uh, if you look at the skills are based on that in order to help you think through, analyze um, these problems and then develop countermeasures to move yourself forward. I think in the next slide, I think we, yeah, I guess another, another question, you know, what, what is your main, main obstacle? And, um, uh, oh, um, and I'd say just again, what I've seen with companies, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of obstacles, but really uh, gets back to, I see the main obstacle is what do we do? And we talked about that at the beginning, what do we do in order to get over these obstacles, these hurdles, meet our objectives and all that? And like I said, sometimes, uh, most of the time I'd say in organizations, they almost get overwhelmed because they feel like there's so many obstacles to get through, but it's really, how do you, how do you handle those different obstacles and also keep that, that overarching objective, uh, which would be organizational objectives in mind. And you kind of stay to that, whatever that true north is for your organization to work through the hurdles that are in your way to reach that. Yeah, I would say, and it's probably similar to that. What I'm, I think what we've been um, sharing in our experience is um, it's almost like a lack of a workable plan. At least um, in the conversations, I feel like you're heading in the right direction is we're looking at the plan and we're saying, is this the right plan? A lot, so getting away from like, we know we're just busy executing. We're like, we're working hard on the plan. We don't know if it's a good plan or we're not sure the plan's gonna work or not, but we're just busy. And so I think some of it is really step back and reflect on the approach and really assess whether or not it's likely to succeed and get you where you're going. And so it seems partly one main obstacle is the lack of a, of a, of a sufficient plan um, to get you, you know, that the whole thing has been planned out and thought through and there's more of a clear program. Um, seems like that, that would be one of the biggest obstacles I'm seeing.
Yeah, so I'm just, um, what I, the only thing I'm gonna add in here, what I have also seen, so in my work, for years I've been around the topic of that this continuous improvement culture requires a certain style of leadership, something more coaching-like, more empowering. Um, if we have um, people in the production floor getting very involved and sharing their ideas, I've watched many times how it just kind of jams up against traditional leadership that just doesn't know what to do with all this involvement. And it's kind of usually just clashes together. I've also seen in my years, you know, I've been doing this 30 some of years, leaders almost everywhere they've ever known all wish they were more like this. They all wish they were better coaches. They, they're well aware that this is required for continuous improvement and that they need to work more by asking questions and, and let go of the control more and they find it very hard. Uh, the work that I've been doing that actually I was more surprised than anyone when it started to work. It really doesn't have to do with some specific intervention from me. It is getting our leaders together as a community and getting them sharing the struggles. We've mentioned already several times that this is hard. What I'm seeing work is the more your leadership community is connected as a community and they are sharing those struggles and challenges, the more likely they move this dial forward. So I think it's what's available to any organization is thinking through how can we create more community amongst our leaders and an avenue for them to share the struggle. And just like, that's just the thing is if humans share where they're having a common struggle, they will rise above it. So I think it's really looking for evidence to do that. I think it's gonna be a big piece of, of a big piece of what it's gonna take. And Western leadership has a hard time with that. Sure, what we talked about is is uh, coming together and sharing their struggles because we, you know, classically we've been looked upon as having the answers, having all the answers. So you can't you can't really uh, you know lift up the cover and say, oh, you know, look at the you know my issues or or my struggles. So yeah, yeah, I I, I get that. But <laughs> as I've watched it in front of my very eyes. As they do it, they seek to strengthen it. Once they start changing their behaviors, they're like, I don't care how I have to do it. If getting <laughs> getting real helps me get better results, they're in. So, all right, we can keep going. I know we're kind of running out of time. Yeah. Okay. So have we truly imagined, and you, you were kind of uh, uh, talking towards this, have we truly imagined what success would look like? Right. Right, so I, I, this I'll just briefly comment. This is what I keep noticing in this effort to keep trying is be careful that we're not just working towards something we've really never thought through what does success look like? What's the end game? If this really all worked, what would be true? And I always think the truth is it's mind blowing um, what's possible if we really have teams of problem solvers and you know all the standard, if all these things were true and people were engaged in, all of that. So I think the more, if we more reverse engineer, really think about that and what does success look like and then plan accordingly would be also really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thing I, I you know, when I've been talking, I've been kind of alluding to, to skills and I just want to go through, kind of go through what these, yes. I guess, what these foundational skills are. This slide is going to get a little bit busy. I, I, I'm fully aware of that, but just kind of walk walk through these, um, as, I, as we mentioned up front, um, you know, really standard work and Kaizen really can only exist when they coexist. They, they are completely codependent. They don't, they don't exist independently of each other. And if you look at the, these fundamental skills, and if you, if you drive this back to Toyota and how they developed this going back like 70 years ago, um, was uh, through um, some skills called from the TWI, Training Within Industries, Job Instruction, Job Methods, job relations. Um, they're all based on the scientific method. Um, and as years later, oh, I guess about 14 years ago, when Mike, before Mike Roth was doing his research on Toyota Kata, the way he was observing these, these behavioral patterns as they de developed over the decades. But what are these, uh, what are these different behavioral patterns, um, skills in a sense, um, can do for you? And if you look at, I may I'll say this real quick. So if you look at Toyota, they don't really go and here, let's put you in a class or anything like that. And we'll teach you these skills. They go, hmm, actually, let's go work on a project together. And through that actual work, you'll practice and practice, 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 and learn these skills. 
do a whole variety of things. And then whoever your supervisor, mentor, coach, you call it is, he'll help you through that by asking questions at that level. So if you look at these skills, JI, um, JR and JM, and even the improvement kata and coaching kata in your organization, even though I'm going to talk at the maybe more production level, they, they really interp they interpolate out greater than that is um, in order for you just to start, you've got to even initially even stabilize the process. And all these skills can be absolutely directly used to stabilize the process. Just so you can get the process stable enough, you could begin observing what's going on in order to really make improvements. So the first thing is really just to stabilize it. Not so much improvement as an improvement step, as we'll talk about next, but just to stabilize the process. Without a stable process, it's hard to make improvements. Then you also then use those same skills to you know, finally get some level of stability, your current state, and you wanna to get to um, some future state or, or um, future condition you know, for the kind of things is you use these same skills. So in this case, if you can't do something, well, JI can help you, the skill to help you do that. Or if somebody won't do that, job relations can help you, you know, through a scientific methodology, uh, resolve that. Or if it's too hard, job methods help you make improvements to do that. And also too, and this is something that developed over time too, is like with job methods. So the improvement kata is really looking at the bigger picture. What's the bigger picture of improvement? What's the, what's the challenge we have, the, the, the future condition we wanna to get to, um, to work through that, to get over, as we talked about, to get through these obstacles. And then ultimately the other thing these same skills can do is to help you set up standard work which is really to help you keep from backtracking because most organizations will make improvements and then they'll really taper off. Actually, they're lucky if they just even stabilize. Most organizations taper off and lose a lot of the gains they've had. But these same skills help you, you know, standardize things, stay in place so you can, again, stabilize at the next level, again, to go back through the, the improvement cycle to make the steps up, step ups, and which would be these. Really, if you look at the, again, from the skills, Job instruction helps you stabilize, so everybody's doing it the same. Job methods help you, along with the improvement kata, help you make the improvement, and then you restabilize with the job instruction, so you everybody gets trained to do it the new way. And then job relations is really helping people because it's a people problem uh, uh, application of science, scientific thinking, scientific behavior to make an environment like. Um, Cheryl was talking about making where you feel safe, where you communicate, where you can um, have dialogue and feedback. It's to help do that. And then, and then ultimately from the coaching standpoint, through this whole process, coaching, mentoring, questioning is always a part of this in order to help learn, to help move things forward, to help, um, in a way, deploy these skills and the, um, uh, the effectiveness, the competency with with these skills. So like I said, no, this is busy, but so this is looking at the production, level, but really once you learn these patterns of behavior, these uh, that are based on scientific thinking, they translate up into um, um, larger projects, larger things that you need to do as an organization. One guy I know that was one of the, one of the going back 20 years ago, worked the TWI, he was an engineering manager. He said, when I started out, I could not imagine how I would have used these skills in my engineering projects. He said, once I got experience with them and confidence with them, he said, now today, he goes, I can't imagine doing my engineering projects without them. So that's kind of the learning that transcends up. And then of course you need a, some type of structure of, of, to deploy. Yeah, and, and, and when we look at this, um, this goes to really uh, some for leadership skills, of course, but there needs to be structure and then routines in place to make everything that, that we've been talking about up to this point work consistently. And many, uh, many organizations and many individuals, uh, they really don't focus enough on this, this structure, these leadership skills that are necessary. And if we look at this in, a, in some sort of a, a system approach, um, you've got to have these, these skills at the front line that, that, uh, Jim touched upon with TWI and with Kata, also have to have that ability to, to have a, a daily management process in place, problem solving processes in places and improvement methods in places. But all of that has to be in a structured 
and um, an aligned approach uh, to, to getting the work done. And really, this is what I see uh, most often as, as a failure point is this, uh, this lack of leadership structure and system thinking. And it's a, you know, a siloed approach or it's asking, uh, you know, that subject matter expert, uh, you know, to, to go work on a project, you know, work on, uh, you know, getting an element in place, uh, uh, you know, of, of lean work, and, but yet not tying it all together. And, and it really, if we go back to, um, you know, some of the comments that Cheryl made early on with, uh, you know, with, with metrics, um, this really has to be uh, looked at at the highest levels of the organization through maybe strategy deployment or OSHA, um, and then translate it down through the different levels and layers of the organization, all the way down to uh, the workers on the shop floor. And if we start at, the, at that level, uh, the supervisors and team members, they're intensely focused on the work and their standards that they need to achieve in the next, you know, the next minute, the next hour uh, for that day. And then uh, the supervisors and the area managers are looking at, well, okay, what do we have in front of us, you know, for this week, perhaps on the month level. And then that translates all the way up through, but it's that intense focus on um, those key drivers of safety, quality, delivery, and cost to deliver the maximum amount of value to the client. And, and we have to have that system in place. And it's there's skills involved here, leadership skills. All right, Jim, let's go to the next one. Yeah, and just uh, you know, some some key things here to, uh, that we we find often lacking, and uh, some recommendations is, you know, for larger organizations and larger plants, uh, multi-plant uh, approaches to this, you know, there there has to be a you know a good, uh, yeah, I guess, planning phase up front with the steering group that really understands the long-term picture and then what do they need to do to get that in place uh, for from a tactical standpoint good program leaders, strong program leaders, uh, and then site leaders that are also in alignment um, and, and know how this is gonna drive uh, the success for them for the for the near future. Uh, we talked about on the last slide, the standards for, uh, for program governance uh, and the skills of, uh, needed there. And then <clears throat> communication. Communication is so important, uh, you know, on, on a daily basis, whether it's tier meetings, uh, you know, throughout the day, whether it's, uh, you know, the leader standard work, uh, looking at the, uh, the what's happening on a, on a daily basis, um, you know, communicating all the way up and down uh, the organization to once again, keep that intense focus on those, uh, on those key drivers. Um, and then the rest of the work will take care of itself. So you know, those appropriate K KPIs, um, you know, they come out of that work uh, that, that's done. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll we'll just close out with this this comment. Uh, so basically, is this if uh, if you're not using TWI or con or even coaching the same in a few months, that's a problem. The other thing with it, if you're using TWI, Kata, and even coaching the same in three years, that's also a problem. So it's really, you know, uh, Cheryl was talking about this. It's really about this growth and learning the process you go through these iterative steps as you learn it and um, proliferate it through your organization. So, you know, with that, you know, we'd like to, you know, thank everybody for being part of this. One thing we did want to let you know about is with, with all these, actually we're, we're um, uh, Lean Frontiers along with the TWI Institute and Cheryl and uh, Lean Leadership Center are actually offering um, something new. It's called the Skills Lab. And basically it's a three-day, very intense, um, um, event where you will learn all these skills, the JI, JM, JR, you know, the IK Improvement Kata, Coaching Kata, and coaching, how to proliferate coaching in your organization um, through practice and very intense practice in kind of a real life simulator. And also to how these things work in conjunction with each other. So not just each one standing alone, but how they work. Because when you're, when you're going, when you're trying to develop a culture of continuous improvement, you are using these skills simultaneously um, at the same time. So um, you can learn more there. Also too, if you're interested in it and, and wanna sign up, you can use the promo code WBNR, you know, short for webinar, in the next 48 hours and get $250 off the registration. So um, Skills Lab should be something um, 
fun, intense, and a great learning opportunity. And we thank everybody for their um, time. And uh, we hope you learned a little bit out of this and look forward to hearing from everybody. Thank you, Jim, Cheryl, and Scott. I know Scott had to hop off. He um, had to go meet with a client. Um, but thank you to everybody who attended today. There will also be a link to view the recording. And I will see everyone next time. Have a great day.